So welcome back guys to another video and no doubt the year 2020 has been absolutely insane with all the pandemics and staying at home and now if you're like myself and you live on the east coast well now we gotta worry about hurricanes but my escapism is always video games and I was noticing a lot of video games I enjoy growing up turned to dirty 30 in the year 2020 so today I'm gonna be talking about five classic games that turned 30 this year now the first game I want to talk about is a little arcade title that I really don't feel like gets enough appreciation. I really enjoyed this game and that is Hammering Harry. Now Hammering Harry is by the folks at IRIM and I remember playing this when I was like five years old. My sister and her friends would go to the skating rink every weekend and I really didn't care about skating. I really didn't want to learn. I, I, I went there just for the arcade games because they always had the biggest and best selection. They always had the newest titles and I saw this little arcade game, Hammering Harry, and it really struck a chord with me because it was something a little different. See, a lot of arcade games at the skating rink were like fighting games or beat em ups or space shooters, and this was a platformer. And I was like, man, this is kind of cool. This is like playing a souped up Super Nintendo game. No pun intended. It was just mind blowing. And, you know, Hammering Harry, you're playing as this carpenter named Harry trying to stop this evil corporation construction company from demolishing the town. And you're going through stage by stage, hitting people with your hammer and using various power ups with your hard hat. It was a lot of fun. And I was like, man, I cannot wait for this eventually to come out for Super Nintendo and rent it one weekend at Blockbuster. Unfortunately, it never happened. Uh, for some reason, Hammering Harry did not uh, pick up in the West, which I, I don't understand because it was such a great game. I think the only Hammering Harry games we got here in the West was maybe a Game Boy game, and we did get a reboot of Hammering Hero for the PSP, which is an also a really awesome game that I highly recommend. But I will say, if you have some way, shape, or form to play Hammering Harry right now and you have not yet, get on it. It's freaking awesome. Now back when I was in middle school I started collecting for the NES again because they had just opened up a new store in my town called Funko Land. Boy do I miss that store. That store was freaking awesome. And you know back then no one wanted to play NES games. Everyone was like oh that's old stuff but I just wanted to play them because I enjoyed video games no matter what year, no matter what the graphics looked like. I just wanted to go back and play them. And my friends and I were really into skateboarding and one game that turns 30 years old this year that I I absolutely love is Skater Die 2. Skater Die 2 is a game, in my opinion, that was way ahead of its time from Electronic Arts, uh, aka EA. And I, I really enjoyed, you know, the fact that you could go out and you could upgrade your skateboard, you could learn new moves, and it was this action adventure game that really revolved around the skateboarding culture. And even my friends and I would play the the half pipe mini game, and for a two for a controller that had two button layout. It had a lot of different tricks that you could do. And I thought it was really, really revolutionary and way ahead of its time. Even playing it as a AKA old game by then, I was like, man, this is, this is really, really good. And the theme song, the theme song to Skate or Die 2 is like embedded in my brain. I, I, I remember my friends and I, when we would go out skateboarding, we would just sit there and be like, skate or die. <laughs> Die, 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 die. <laughs> I remember we would do that all the time. And so yeah, Skater Die 2 officially turns 30 years old. Now in the 90s, there were a lot of product placements in video games. Video games were starting to become popular again, and one game that I definitely was very surprised to turn 30 years old is Yo Noid. Do you guys remember Noid? He was like that weird red pizza goblin that always caused mischief and for some reason always made you want to eat some Domino's pizza. Well, he got his own video game by Capcom of all things. I was like, wow, I remember my, my sister's friend came over and they were having like a sleepover and she dropped the game off in my room. And I think it was a way to distract me because I was, I was like five years younger, so I'd always bust in while they were trying to choreograph new kids on the block uh, dance moves or they were talking about boys. I, I just wanted to be you know, noticed, I guess. So the video game did a great job uh, distracting me from the things that they were doing because it was a really fun game and it was, 
it was very tough as well. You're playing as Noid and you know, you're hitting bad guys with your yo-yo, you're trying not to fall in the water, and there were so many product placements for Domino's that it instantly made me want to eat some pizza. So kudos for Domino's on that. And a little tidbit, I didn't know until a couple of years ago from watching GameSack that this was actually a totally different game in Japan. It was called uh, Mass Ninja Hamaru. And, you know, it wasn't really uncommon back then for them to do a uh, sprite swap for different regions, and I could see why they did it. I'm not too familiar with the Mask Ninja Humaru, but I, I, I like the charm, but still to this day, then my nostalgia rests with Yo Noi. Now, a game that officially turns 30 years old in North America had already been out in Japan since 1987 is Final Fantasy. I mean, this series really doesn't need any sort of introduction, but my introduction to Final Fantasy was pretty awesome because I remember I was hanging out with my friend and we were playing NES games. I was going through his little collection and he had Final Fantasy and I'm like, oh, this looks like a lot of fun because I love like medieval, you know, knights and wizards and stuff like that. And I remember he was like, no, you don't want to play that. That's a bad game. That game sucks. I'm like, really? So I went ahead and tried to play it and I was like, this is an RPG. I mean, even at a young age, I knew what RPGs were because I had already played games like Dragon Warrior previously. So I knew what I was getting myself into. And, you know, Final Fantasy isn't one of those games that's fun to watch. So I can understand why he was starting to get kind of annoyed when I was really getting into it. And he eventually let me borrow it. But Final Fantasy had something very, very special going for it. Um, you know, I think the thing that stuck out the most to me with Final Fantasy was the battle system. Because Dragon Warrior was like first person perspective, which was pretty awesome for the time. But to see the third person perspective, to choose your class, to choose your team, to kind of set your own adventure was really something special. And, you know, till, still to this day, anyone who loves RPGs will tell you Final Fantasy, rather it's Final Fantasy 1, 7, 6, 5, 9, 12, whatever. Final Fantasy is a very special game and I cannot believe that it's officially 30 years old. And just, just a little thing I want to add in, if you do want to play Final Fantasy, the first one, I actually would really recommend the PSP port. It's, it's really awesome. It's got great sprite work, uh, remastered soundtrack, and I think a, they balanced out a lot of uh, problems that the NES version had. That is the, the version I would recommend in case you have never played the original Final Fantasy and you want to go back and kind of just try it out. And the last game I want to talk about that officially turns 30 years old in 2020, it's a little game I found on YouTube. Uh, you know, this is back in 2007, 2008. I was watching Classic Game Room, and it seemed like every time Mark talked about the Sega Genesis, he would always talk about this game called Musha. He'd be like, yeah, you know, Sega, the Musha, Truxton, you know? And I was just like, what, what is he talking about? And I remember I looked up the gameplay footage, and I was completely blown away. I could not believe a game like this slipped under my radar because everything I love about video games, it had anime cutscenes, it had you know heavy metal music, it had giant mecha, it was a shoot 'em up. I was like, oh my god. And even back then, that game was pretty expensive. It's a very highly collectible Sega Genesis game. And it wasn't until a couple of years later I finally got it on the Sega Genesis as a reproduction cart and I finally got to play it, and it's still one of my favorite games I can just pick up and play and just really, really enjoy. And uh, what's funny is a little behind the scenes is I'm actually really good friends with the composer from Musha, uh, Toshiaki Sakoda. Uh, he's a really awesome dude. I've been actually doing a lot of music with him, not video game music, but uh, him and I have been you know, trading uh, tracks here and there and doing some uh, compositions online. And here I am in 2020 uh, playing Ozzy Osbourne's Bark at the Moon with the composer from Musha. That's very, very interesting. And you know, a little honorable mention before I close this video is another game that officially turns 30 that Toshiaki uh, worked on, and that is Devil's Crush, a very amazingly satanic pinball game on the TurboGrafx-16 that I really, really enjoy. It's got a very good heavy metal soundtrack. But anyway guys, those are some games that turned the Dirty 30 in the year 2020. 
damn, that makes me feel so old. I always tell folks, if you want to feel old, look at the release dates of some of the games you enjoy from your childhood. I mean, I know my hair is going gray, but holy crap, I cannot believe that. And I know I left a lot of games out that officially turned 30 years old this year. This is where I want you guys to come in. Leave a comment below. Tell me some of your favorite games that turned 30 years old in the year 2020. If you'll make a response video, be sure to leave a link as a comment on this channel leave a link to that video i'd love to see it i'm pretty sure a lot of you folks would like to see those as well and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe but also hit the bell for notifications so you're notified of all weekly content that comes out on this channel anyway guys as always thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and as always happy gaming